microphone over here on the side. Feel free to come up and ask your question. So how long were you, how long were you prepared to stay? <laughs> how long what? How long, how long, how long were we prepared to stay? Um, as long as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... The, the whole point, I think, so I've never made a film. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you all. I've never made a film before, um, and but I did know that uh, for a good story, you need some sort of transformation. And the thing that would transform us, specifically the theorists, um, was some information from the Collider, because it really was our entire careers before we got to see something of this energy. And uh, that's, I knew if we didn't have that, it would be an unsatisfying film for me. So it was simply as long as that took. And we were a fly on the elephant that was this big machine. And we were just following it until it, you know, made it to the finish line. How did, I your, mean, mo how did your models fare? How did what? How did your models fare? Well, you time? heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the truth is that, um, the great thing about data is um, it always removes the false part. So this is a nice festival for this. Um, because <laughs> you, um, so you build models and, and you don't go too deeply into them because you can't invest so much because you really don't know what's true. You investigate uh, theoretically many possibilities and just one number hones your, uh, your energy because you can wipe out the 99.9% .9 of things which are no longer, which are clearly not true. And so any piece of data is, is phenomenal. And uh, we're not so singular that we each have one model and we only look at one machine. You have to simplify it a little bit for a movie. But um, I think ultimately, whatever the data was going to be, and it's true in this case, it was uh, thrilling for all of us because we felt like something happened and we're at the next step. That's an awesome outcome for you. <laughs> you know, I, I really was there so much that people sort of began to think I was working there and they started asking me, the other the people who were filming said, well, when are you going to finish? And I said, well, you first. Yeah. So. <laughs> the next, next question? Um, so I thought it was a great film, but one of the things that I was interested in is you're telling the story through four or five different people, and I was wondering how you guys came to decide who those people were and shape the narrative with, with those people. And did they appreciate you being there, or were they, you know, so-so? Well, um, you know, we had one built-in character, <laughs> um, it's, and uh, although, you know, as I say, David did not insist that he be a character. He didn't. He didn't want this to be a film about him. In fact. You know, he really held off to a certain extent. Um, although he did bring Savas and Nima as people that he thought were going to be very good characters and, and were great. Um, we had some additional theorists, though. Um, initially, I, I think I interviewed about four other theorists that I was following for, for a certain period of time. The experimental side was uh, more of a real exploration on our part. David had met Fabiola. In the scene that you see, that basically was his interaction with Fabiola, but it was enough uh, for me to contact her and ask for other recommendations. So I got a, a spectrum of about a half dozen other people from the Atlas experiment, did some pre-interviews, um, did some real interviews. But at the beginning, we were actually also covering the other experiment, the CMS experiment. So there, there's two general purpose experiments. And, and I actually thought initially that could have been more of the drama as the competition between them. But what happened is that, you know, as things went on, first of all, some people dropped out. The people that are in the film, they were incredibly, incredibly supportive throughout. Um, but it does take something. Some people did drop out. And, you know, what also became clear is that on the experimentalist side, you know, the drama from a filmmaking perspective was what was happening in the control rooms. And so, you know, I would be there in those moments and uh, we'd be filming and Monica was there and Martin was there and Fabiola was there. And so they really sort of rose to the top and luckily they were also great characters but they allowed us to tell that story in a very clear way. Yes, ma'am. Um, so my disclosure is 
disclaimer is that I'm a physician, and I think that your science might be better understood than mine, maybe more precise than mine, but it seems from my perspective that you've hung a lot on a number, and it's just a measurement, and how sure are you that you're correct, and that the number isn't going to change? Right. Uh, good. The question is, is that number going to change? How can you be so confident and make a 99-minute film about a number? <laughs> God forbid. Um, we, um, so, we're uh, quite confident about that number. Um, we are incredibly speculative when it comes to developing theories, and it's only because we have to, because any time you discover something is true, it's, it's often extraordinarily surprising. So we have to be very uh, limber when it comes to imagining what could be the case, what could be true. Um, that's, a, that's a theory perspective. The experimental perspective um, is, is just the opposite. So the, the statistical analysis that was done there, when they announced it on July 4th, they said, we measured this particle, and it's, we measured it to five sigma, meaning um, there's a one in three and a half million chance that it's not there, and there's a, the rest of those numbers that it is there. Um, they did not say it was the Higgs. They said, we saw something. The theorists, after seeing something at two and a half sigma seven months earlier, already started speculating that it's there, and they started working on other theories, they meaning me. Um, and the experimentalists are saying, no, we don't know why it's not there. What are you guys, are a bunch of idiots. They made that announcement, and uh, we said it's there, and that's what the mass is. They still, they would refuse to say that it was the Higgs. Um, and they waited, um, I guess it was eight more months until the following March, when they were up to eight sigma, where they said it was a Higgs-like particle. <laughs> Only when it hit 11 sigma, which I think is a number which doesn't have a common name, I think it's one in the septillion or something like that, they would admit that it is probably the Higgs particle. <laughs> so there is, a, there is a level of rigor in, dis, in the decision making about whether a discovery has been made or not. And while it sounds very esoteric, there is something very clean about particle physics. It's a very uh, pure environment we're testing. It's not a complex system like a biological system. It's a vacuum and two particles and then particles coming out and measuring the energies extraordinarily precisely. So we simplify the environment to such a degree that we can say things incredibly rigorously. What does it say about the rest of the world? That's complicated and we have to make those connections.